When you quit your toxic workplace, you thought it was over, but you've realized you can't just shake it off. Your toxic job is haunting you. You're still nervous and on edge. You're still angry about what happened and you are terrified that the next place will be just as bad or worse. We need to talk about the aftermath of a toxic job because if you don't deal with it, it will continue to ruin your confidence, your career and your life. I've helped thousands of people get over their toxic jobs. And while some have received formal medical diagnoses, which we'll talk about later, virtually all of them experienced the same phenomenon after leaving a toxic workplace. A few months ago, I started calling this post-toxic job syndrome or PTSJ for short. I want to highlight here, a toxic job is not just a bad job with varying levels of drama and annoyances. In a toxic workplace, you experience workplace trauma. I know trauma is a big word and people have all sorts of feelings around it, but around here we call things what they are. Most of the people that I speak with think the trauma from their toxic job is in the toxic interactions and dynamics that they had to deal with at work. For example, their boss's micromanagement or their backstabbing coworker undermining them every chance they got. But that was not the trauma. As Dr. Gabor defines, trauma is not what happens to you, but what happens inside of you as a result. And like any trauma, when you experience workplace trauma, you adapt to protect yourself. Your brain adapts. It creates beliefs, behaviors, and habits that help you survive in the toxic work environment. Some of these you make intentionally, like avoiding your gossiping coworker. Others that you made, you made subconsciously in order to survive the toxic workplace. These adaptions have a profound impact on your life, even when the symptoms are subtle. In fact, I've spoken with people who have left toxic work environments years, even decades ago. And because they were not aware of their PTJS, their suffering extended far past their toxic job. They weren't aware of the adaptions. They did not recover their self-confidence or their self-worth and each area of their life was impacted. I don't want you to suffer like that, Bestie. So let's talk about the effects that PTJS has on your career and your life. There are four areas of impact. The first impact of post-toxic job syndrome is one you will probably notice. Others will too. You are not the same way you were before your toxic work experience in how you show up at work. The functional impacts of PTJS are typically based in behavior changes that you made in your toxic workplace in order to minimize your exposure to the toxic behaviors and the toxic dynamics. I wanna be clear, these adaptions are protective and it's likely they served you well in your toxic job. While you may be aware of some of these, there may be many adaptions that you made that you were not necessarily aware of. Thing is, if you keep these toxic job adaptions, they can inadvertently restage a toxic work dynamic. This makes so much more sense with an example. So let's get into one. A ton of my clients have had micromanaging bosses in their toxic workplaces. And if you've had a micromanager, you know exactly how it goes. They constantly look over your shoulder. They demand explanations. And of course, they unfairly criticize your work. In response, you probably made an adaption of over-communicating with the micromanager to try to keep them off your back. You know they're gonna ask anyway, so you might as well explain yourself. When you were working with that toxic boss, it may have mitigated or minimized the micromanagement that you experienced. But how long did you have to operate that way before you escaped? At the low end, you probably had to work with them for a few months before you can escape. Or perhaps you had to deal with a micromanaging boss for years. During that time, two things happened. First, your brain learned that over-communication equals safety. And second, the adaption became a habit. Now you bring that habit into an otherwise non-toxic work environment, and what happens? Well, maybe your new manager is super smart and knows exactly what is happening. So they reassure you that you don't need to give them details and get them to sign off on everything that you do. But that's not typically what happens. It's more likely that either the new manager is going to assume this is how you prefer to work and that habit becomes their expectation, which recreates a toxic work dynamic. Or they get the impression that you lack capability or confidence which makes them less confident in you, which also creates another toxic work environment. Of course, this goes beyond over-communicating with your manager. Some other functional symptoms of post-traumatic job syndrome that I see are approval-seeking, 
people pleasing and visibility minimization. You just wanna disappear at work. The nature of these toxic job adaptions brings us directly to the second PTJS impact. And this one will absolutely stall your career and make everything from finding a new job to getting a decent performance review 10 times harder. There is a universal truth in a toxic work environment. It is at the core of every toxic work experience. In fact, it's one of the ways that I can tell someone has had a toxic work experience without them telling me they had a toxic work experience. You cannot trust anyone at work. Fractured trust proliferates in a toxic workplace. At some point in your toxic job, your trust was broken. Maybe you confided in a coworker only to find out that they broke that confidence and gossiped about you to anyone who would listen. Or you trusted your boss and their guidance, but things went sideways and they threw you under a bus to save themselves. No matter what, a byproduct of you getting burned in a toxic work environment is you lost trust in other people. Obviously, you couldn't trust most of the people that you worked with in a toxic work environment. And the way that you interacted with everyone at work was based on that inherent lack of trust. But what happens when you enter a functional work environment? You still don't trust anyone. And this distrust sends micro signals that make other people not trust you. We need to believe what people say, know that they will deliver on their promises, etc. When there is low or no trust, Toxicity enters the chat. Some of the most toxic behaviors in the workplace come from a lack of trust, such as backstabbing, micromanagement, and employee monitoring. In addition to all those problems as a result of the lack of trust, it also creates significant impacts on your professional relationships. You withdraw socially at work. Of course, coworkers don't need to be your friends, but building productive and positive relationships is crucial for your success. And quite frankly, to not be miserable at work every day. But you have detached from your coworkers. You may even lose contact with old colleagues that you had who were supportive in your career and could open doors for your next move. Ultimately, you lose trust in yourself in a toxic workplace. You lose trust in your ability to do your job, to make decisions, to keep yourself safe. This has devastating consequences on your psyche, which we'll come back to in just a minute. Rebuilding operational trust levels is so important. It is one of the primary goals of the work that I do with my clients and in my Get Over Your Toxic Job guidebook. And if you wanna learn more about that, check those show notes for details. Now, back to something I just mentioned. While the first two impacts of post-toxic job syndrome are ones that are exterior, that is, they are evident in how you show up at work and how you interact with other people. The next impact of PTJS brings us inside your mind. To understand it, I want to give a teeny tiny bit of context. Welcome to today's Career Bestie Psych 101 lesson. While you are special and unique, you are human. And like all humans, you have needs. And some are more important than others, according to Maslow's hierarchy of needs. You have fundamental needs like food, shelter, and safety, and some higher level deeds, which are frankly optional, and the order may vary from person to person. That safety one though, it's kind of a big deal. In fact, your brain has evolved to prioritize safety above everything else. When your brain detects danger, the most primitive area of your brain, the amygdala, takes over, activating your fight, flight, freeze, or fawn response. While some threats are instinctual, like spotting a snake or your ex-boyfriend out in the wild, <laughs> other threats are learned either by warning or by hard lessons. For instance, your mom probably told you not to touch a hot stove when you were a child. If you were smart, you heeded her warnings. But maybe you were more the learn by doing kind or just wanted to know how hot it was, so you learned the lesson by touching the stove. And you didn't need to touch the stove multiple times to realize a hot stove is actually really hot. Your brain also generalizes this information. Stove equals danger. All that said, I will state the obvious. You are never safe in a toxic workplace, which means your nervous system is jacked. It's also common for a toxic workplace to run hot and cold. One day your toxic boss is a charismatic good guy praising your work and a micromanaging nightmare the next. And even on the good days, it could turn unexpectedly. As a result, your brain has learned that work is not safe and you are living in fight, flight, freeze, fawn. Even when you leave the toxic workplace and get yourself a job in a healthy, 
well-adjusted company, you still feel anxious and on edge. This can be in general, or it can be in specific situations. After I left my toxic job, I was generally fine at work, but I had panic attacks before one-on-ones with my manager. Depending on what you experienced, your brain is going to detect different threats. If you asked for help on a project and it was denied or worse, you were ostracized for asking, your brain may have decided asking for help is not safe. So now you struggle, but you're never going to raise your hand for help. Or perhaps your boss and coworkers were overly critical and would undermine your ideas in meetings, only to steal them for themselves later, of course. In this scenario, you may experience fear and anxiety around speaking up in meetings or offering any ideas at all. There is another major psychological impact impact in the aftermath of a toxic job. And that is you lose yourself. The trauma of a toxic job changes you. Your confidence is wrecked. After being constantly questioned, criticized, and berated, you doubt yourself. You doubt your competence and your ability to do your job, let alone to do it well. This leaves you constantly second guessing yourself over things big and small, like Is this company toxic? Or how should I respond to this email? Beyond that, you lost your sense of self. As one toxic job survivor so eloquently commented on one of my posts on Instagram the other day, I feel like a shell of my former self. Before the toxic job, your self-identity may have been very different. Most of my clients were confident in their skills and abilities. They trusted and believed in their coworkers and in themselves. And they had a lot of esteem at work. After, it's a totally different picture. So many people I speak with think this version of themselves is gone, never to be replaced. And this is a big source of mourning after a toxic job. Which brings us to the fourth impact of post-toxic job syndrome. And this underlies all of them. The tricky thing with this post-toxic job syndrome impact is you were both acutely aware of it, but you don't want to admit it. Negativity permeates a toxic workplace. It is impossible to exist in the energy of a toxic work environment without it affecting you, especially if you were there for a while. Case in point, after a day at your toxic job, you probably had zero energy to do anything, whether it was socializing with your friends or planning your escape. Toxic people at work are energy vampires, and when you're energetically drained, under constant stress, and being targeted by toxic office politics, This has a huge impact on you emotionally. This is why you're exhausted all the time, yet having difficulty falling or staying asleep. Earlier in this video, I talked about feeling anxious and on edge. You are also hyper aware of toxic job signs and you panic when you notice one. Many of my clients have even had diagnoses of anxiety, depression, and even post-traumatic stress disorder after leaving a toxic job. If you think you might be experiencing any of those, please, please, please go see your doctor. These are serious medical conditions and you deserve to get support in every realm of healing from a toxic work environment. As you've been watching this video, if you have been nodding your head, you may realize that the aftermath of your toxic workplace has left you with post-toxic job syndrome. I do want to highlight there are different severities of this that you may be experiencing. And the steps to get over your toxic job depend on where you are at. To help you understand if you have PTJS and what level it is, I created a quiz so you can find out where you're at and get suggested recovery tips tailored to your stage. You can take the quiz at toxicjobquiz.com. It's important to know that PTJS does not go away on its own. Trauma doesn't resolve itself. And ignoring it just means that you're going to be hauling around your toxic job baggage until you unpack it. Thing is, you probably have no idea how to get over your toxic job. Workplace trauma recovery is not easy, and you've probably never done it before. Don't worry, I've got you, bestie. Go and watch this video now to find out how you can start getting over your toxic job today.